Peppa Pig theme park is located just a few kid steps away from Legoland Florida Resort. This is a separately ticketed theme park and not just a themed area. Every aspect of this park has been created for preschoolers, but never at the expense of an enjoyable time for everybody, even if you don't have your own little piggies. I have included chapter markers in this video so you can skip to the part you are most interested in or re-watch a specific section. The park has a really wide open design which makes it very easy for adults to keep track of the little piggies and the walkways are very nice and wide which makes it easy to move around with a wheelchair, ECV, stroller or wagon. I have tried to include as much information as possible about this park. This means there's a lot of spoilers ahead. Like any modern theme park, I recommend you buy tickets before you arrive online. But if you don't, this is the ticket window. When you enter the park or watch this guide, I know everybody's excited for the rides, but you may want to consider a brief stop into guest services where you can pick up a map. If needed, a Florida sensory guide or a hero accessibility guide. The hero accessibility guide includes information about wheelchair access, ride restrictions, recommended not to ride and what is allowed. There's also information about the hero access pass which is for any guest needing some extra assistance. This allows a one-time entry for the assigned guest and up to five others through the exit of some of the rides. If you wish to ride again, you will need to get a return time. You can also rent a wheelchair, stroller, or ECV. Peppa Pig Theme Park is a cashless park. Here you can convert up to $500 cash into a Visa card. Unlike coin counters, the kiosk does not have a fee. Once you're done, you take the card with whatever amount of cash you put in, and you also get a receipt, which is a good thing to take in case it's an issue, you, you lose one of them, and you might as well take a picture of the receipt. Also inside guest services is first aid, or you can even pick up a first time visitors button. So throughout this guide, you'll see these sensory guides in several places on screen. I wanted you to understand why they're on screen why they are here, who set the numbers, but I'm going to play an interview with Kelly to explain to you what these mean um, better than I probably can. What we've been able to do is partner with IBCCES. They are the experts on providing training to help our staff learn how to be more approachable and sensitive to people on the spectrum, and it helps them understand that different people respond differently to different triggers. So in addition to some of the training that we've gone through, we also have a ranking system. So IBCCES actually came out to our park and ranked all of the attractions and how they might affect or trigger reactions for each of the five senses. Okay. Different people on the spectrum have different needs, of course, and somebody with autism may be triggered by sound or sight, but others might be fine with those and might have a smell aversion. Okay. So what this says is it takes all of the planning work and the guesswork out of that to be able to give you the tools to know hey, if I get on this ride, there's going to be some loud noises. If you're a parent preparing your child, you can have that conversation in advance and talk about. A lot of times it's the scariness or the surprise element oh, yeah. that might trigger an episode or an averse moment for a child that could ultimately ruin a whole day. So what these guides do is help people be prepared. Also appearing in this guide, I have included clips of all of the episodes that I could find of Peppa Pig that inspired the rides and attractions. There are, I'm sure are others. So let's start with the park map itself. It's inspired by the Fun Fair. Fun Fair. I also recommend that you download the official Peppa Pig theme park app, which has been very helpful to me while making this guide, as you can see here. If you have an M1 or M2 Mac, it also runs on your computer, which has been really helpful for me. Now let's talk about rides. This is Daddy Pig's roller coaster, and of course you can see Peppa's balloon ride right behind. And I had a great interview last year with Nick on this roller coaster. Let's watch that now. So this is really awesome. We're Chelsea. doing it. We just went up 14 feet in the air. Woo! Woo! All right. Six, 16 I, miles an hour. We got a camera over there. So <laughs> my first roller coaster was a little too intense for me. Yeah. And it put a sort of bad taste in my mouth for uh, roller coasters, but this is awesome for preschoolers and little ones. So oh yeah. Little bit of about that. We're, we're seeing that this is the best first roller coaster for your preschoolers. There's no crying after this ride. Both adults and kids are clapping wow. and smiling the whole time. Well, maybe time. a couple of happy tears. But... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we dig up the road! Well, now that you know about the ride, I'm sure you want to ride it. So 
This is the entrance, there's a ride of course. That is the entrance over here. It is very close to the duck pond. Uh, first time I was here, it took me a moment to find it. Peppa, George, have you found my car keys? This is Grampy Rabbit's Dinosaur Adventure. This is very similar to a ride you'll find in Legoland Florida Resort. The difference is adults can ride this one. You can't ride the one in Legoland Florida. As you can see in front of me, there's a seat, which is for smaller children if you are traveling with one. Or you can just go by yourself if you're an adult. Here's a little bit of video provided by Legoland Florida Resort of what this ride looks like with a child in the front. The dinosaurs are having fun jumping up and down on the desert island. <laughs> Welcome to the dinosaur garden. Say hello to my dinosaur friends. Uh, don't be frightened, they are not real. Grumpy Rabbit's Dinosaur Park. Welcome to Grumpy Rabbit's Dinosaur Park. <laughs> So this is Grandag Dog's Pirate Boat Ride, which is a pretty cool ride. You can see the sensory guide and also the height requirements below. And all of the rides here at Peppa Pig are designed for preschoolers, but adults can ride them. Here's Grandad Dog. He's taking Danny Dog out for a day on the river. Ahoy there, Grandad Dog! Pretty Polly. Ah, Pretty Polly! So this is Mr. Bull's High Striker, which is another really cool ride that gives you a good perspective of the park. Similar to the Beetle Bounce in Legoland, Florida, if you are familiar with that ride. Another great feature of this ride is you'll notice one of the seats has extra straps. This is a wheelchair transfer seat. This means that if a guest is in a wheelchair and is able to transfer, they can also enjoy the ride, which is really awesome. And another great way this park is very accessible. Roll up, roll up! Test your strength on the old hammer and bell! This is Peppa Pig's balloon ride. It does spin a little bit. The of course, sensory guide is below. Um, I am very sensitive to spinning. I'm, I'm okay on it, but that's very subjective. It uh, does go kind of high, but you know, you are very well surrounded by a cage. It does have Peppa Pig at the very top, which is pretty cool. And it gives you obviously a really great view of the park. So. Another great ride. This basket is specially designed to accommodate a wheelchair with a wider door and an open interior. All aboard for the balloon ride. Slice the main brace, chocks away. Big balloon, big balloon, bigger than the sun and moon. I mentioned before that every single ride is rideable by adults here. And this is no exception. Uh, doesn't mean it's easy, but you can. And that's pretty cool. This is broken up into two different areas, but it's basically the same thing. One is for very small kids, and the other is for everybody else. And you just ride around on a bike. It's pretty cool. Bicycles! It is a lovely sunny day, and Pepper and George are riding their bicycles. One of the great things about Peppa Pig theme park is just like at Legoland, yeah. is there are a lot of activities for kids while you're waiting in line. There are some examples from Dinosaur Adventure. Here is another example of something to do while waiting. Because these rides are made for preschoolers, it feels like the ride times are appropriately length, but of course they're going to be a much shorter time than most adult rides. This means, in my experience, that the line moves pretty quickly and the wait times are generally short. And of course, it's not just the rides. There are a lot of 
really cool play areas and interactive experiences throughout the park as well. Hello, my little ones. Welcome to my garden. Grandpa, what are you doing? I'm planting these seeds. Over here we have Grandpa Pig's greenhouse. Another area for the little ones to run around and play. There's a lot of activities inside, interactive games and things you can play with. And as before, this is a wide open area, so it's easy to keep track of your kids. Grandpa Pig is very good at growing vegetables. Everything in the garden grows from tiny seeds. Grandpa Pig likes to grow tomatoes in his greenhouse. Why is your greenhouse made of glass if glass breaks easily? Because I grow plants in it. My tomatoes. A tree house. A tree house? For George and me. <laughs> and the little curtains are for your tree house. Hello, I'm Rebecca Rabbit. Rebecca Rabbit has a special playground made from burrows. Madame Gazelle and Mandy Mouse are going on a nature trail. Do you want to join them? Can your children can see the footprints on the ground? Let's follow the footprints and see who made them. And over here is a pair of binoculars. I can see some more footprints. They are really tiny. I wonder what has made these. The footprints are being made by ants. Oh, what's that? Peppa has found some footprints. Whose footprints are these? Manly Mouse. Hello, everyone. So this is a cinema, a nice indoor area where you can sit and watch Peppa Pig episodes. So if you aren't up to speed on Peppa Pig and their characters, they play some episodes that the attractions and rides are based on. So you catch up on some of that. But also great just to cool off, or if you have little ones that need to take a nap, or if you have some, you know, some not so little ones that need to take a nap. We're here! <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's the Christmas vegetable family! This, of course, is the fun fair, which is a lot of carnival style games, which are free with admission. Now, there aren't any prizes except for if you try your luck and hook a duck, you do get a ride on Peppa's balloon ride. So. Of course, you don't have to hook a duck to ride it, but it's part of the theme. Hook a duck! Hook a duck! Try your luck to hook a duck! Hook a duck and win a giant teddy! Mummy, can we have a go? Okay. Hey, look, I'm finally tall. <laughs> it's about time, Miss Chirpy. <laughs> You're a wobbly jelly! <laughs> <laughs> wobble, wobble, wobble. Also in the fun fair, you'll see there is a well. But if you walk over to this well, you'll see you can't get water out of it. Now, what is the point of a well if you can't get water out of it? What's the point of a well without water? It's a wishing well. You throw a coin into it and make a wish. This is Mr. Potato's Showtime Arena, which is a place that has some character meet and greets and photo ops, but also two different shows that happen during the day. I just happen to be here on the one year anniversary of this park. And today there are some extra special shows. But here are the two shows that happen regularly. Everyone's come out today. Our friends have come out to play. I'm so excited. You're all invited. Charlie! George! I found a 
treasure chest! We better have a look, shouldn't we? Wow! <coughs> That's amazing! <sighs> treasure hunt! Would you like a clue? Yes, please. Treasure! Right. Look, children! I can fly! There's a string lifting her up. It is a lovely day. Mummy Pig has made a picnic. Pepper, George, Mummy and Daddy Pig like picnics. Everybody likes picnics. This looks like a perfect spot for a picnic. Picnic. <laughs> it is a lovely bright sunny day. Pepper and her family are going for a picnic. Daddy Pig is bringing the picnic basket. Peppa and George love feeding bread to ducks. This is the Muddy Puddle Splash Pad. As you can see, it's much more than just a splash pad, which means you might want to bring a change of clothes so you don't walk around in a wet bathing suit all day, although most of the park is outdoors, so you might dry off pretty quickly. But there also are no lockers here, so you might have to keep that in your bag. Plus, remember, it's Florida. Bring extra sunscreen. You might also want to bring some water resistant, just not really waterproof, but reapply, especially after going in the muddy puddle splash pad. And remember, if you jump in muddy puddles, you must wear your boots. Peppa loves jumping in muddy puddles. Peppa, if you jump in muddy puddles, you must wear your boots. These are the changing rooms. Let's see the haystack dryer over there. Daddy Pig is wearing his swimming costume. Mummy Pig is wearing her swimming costume. Peppa is wearing her swimming costume. Hurry up, George. Everyone's waiting. George is wearing his swimming costume. Yo ho ho! Here we are at Pirate's Island. Let's dig to find the buried treasure and pretend to be castaways. I love Pirate Island. It's so much fun. Pirate Island. They use buckets to make the castle's turrets. And of course you have shopping. This is the only store in the park, but it's a good sized store. It has a lot of really cool Peppa Pig things. Dinosaur. This is Mr. Fox's shop. Hello there! You can go inside the tents here. The camper is fancy. It's got washer and dryer in it. Wow. And if you notice, the steering wheel is on the right side because it's a British shop. This camper van has everything. So let's talk about the food. The food is really good here, and I'm very picky, so I guess that says something. Here's a look at the menu. There seems to be pretty much only one place to eat in the Peppa Pig theme park, but there are a lot of great options for all ages, from preschoolers and then adult options, like this brisket, which is really good, uh, which is why I've mentioned it several times. Um, it is modified, but that's just how I like it. I love this motorhome! Hello! Well, howdy, folks! So what'll it be? There are many areas in the park where you can sit outside and enjoy your food or just enjoy a nice day. Restrooms may be found between the cinema and Miss Rabbit's diner. Of course, you find the girls and boys room. On the way to the boys room on the left, you will also find a dedicated changing room. As of this recording, it's $34 for a day pass, $119 for a two day pass, and $129 for a three day pass. Vacation packages start as low as $201.24. And if you're visiting more than three times in a year, you might want to consider the annual pass, especially if you're considering going to Legoland Theme Park and the Legoland Water Park, because these include discounts as well and parking. Now that you know all about Peppa Pig Theme Park, 
let's look at the hotels. There are three on site, the Legoland Hotel, the Legoland Beach Retreat, and the Pirate Island Hotel. All three of these include breakfast with your stay and have some great amenities, including of course a pool area, but also activities. And if there's a birthday in your group, you can select an option while you're booking your hotel room and you'll get a nice surprise when you get back from the parks. This is an independently produced video, but thank you very much to Legoland Florida Resort, Peppa Pig Theme Park, including guest services for helping me find a lot of this hard to find information you'll see in the guide. Also, thank you to my family, Phenomenal Brandy, Orlando Decoded, John Self, and Ed's Theme Parks for watching advanced drafts of this video to give me some feedback, some things I hadn't thought of, and just to help make the video better. Thanks for watching this video all the way through and please exit through Mr. Box's shop.